Welcome back to American Warrior Radio, right here on the Talk To Me station, AM 1300 WMEL, and online worldwide at 1300WMEL.com, sponsored by AVET Project. I just hope you all listened and heard the great voiceover work from our beloved program director, newly promoted, Vince Young. Congratulations, Vince. Yay! Yay! Awesome, uh, <laughs> awesome job on the VVB Reunion PSA, Public Service Announcement, because that's going to be a fun event, as Glenn and I said at the top Absolutely. of the hour. And, uh, you know, we're always so fond of bringing y'all this incredible next guest of ours. She happens to be the AVET Project's Director of Counseling, Joanne Ivins. Let's go ahead and cue the music for Journey of the Spirit. Well, hi, Joanne. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, welcome, welcome. Thanks again for joining us on American Warrior Radio. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, we, we are, this is a beloved segment on American Warrior Radio, and we've got some great feedback, this journey of the spirit. And this particular segment, we're going to focus on something that's, uh, you know, prime importance right now, being that April is a special month. What are we talking about? Children. Yep. April is month of the military child and you know this is this is a special celebration it's a legacy from former defense secretary Casper Weinberger who established it in 1986 to basically state how important children are in the armed forces community and Glenn like how many kids are we talking about in the military right now uh, approximately two million military children ranging in age from newborn to 18 years old so that's a that's a large chunk of uh, persons uh, when you figure out that uh, the, the military only makes up what one percent of our population exactly so that's a huge chunk of a very small number of people and Joanne I know you're anxious to talk about this because you interact with military families all the time you know, finding, talking to a few of them about what, you know, some of their concerns about their children. And um, some of the things that I've learned is, you know, the children, we see them playing and we see them just going on and we just don't really notice that these kids, sometimes they really have feelings of worry, you know, worry. They're scared, they're lonely, they're not knowing, they don't understand where's my parent, what's going on. And, you know, they just don't understand why they're gone understand, you know, like they're in the military or they're gone stationed somewhere, but they're still feeling all these feelings and sometimes have problems with their grades going down or they're acting out or they get mad, they withdrawn. Uh, they don't know how to express themselves sometimes and they don't know what to say because sometimes, you know, the kids are out there and they're trying to be, exist in a school or wherever they're at or they're moving around or whatever and I, I talked to a few of the parents that do come back. And they say sometimes when they come back, they are so into what has happened when they're gone, the things that have happened to them, the things that are going on, that they sometimes put up a wall, not knowing, but they think that they're helping their children by blocking them from everything. But they don't realize that sometimes the children wonder, what's going on? Is it my fault? Did I do something? Why are they so distant? It's really hard for kids when their parents go back and forth or whatever or leave or something. And, you know... It just, we have to understand that children need to be talked to. We need to take time to talk to them. We need to take time to let them know they are important. We need to include them in things. Uh, and they need attention. I don't know if you've ever been around a group of kids and watched some of them acting up. Yeah, they're, they're, it's a cry for attention. Yeah, they're crying out for attention. And I just... Think, oh my goodness, they're, you know, they're being bratty or they're being something, but they're knowing. No, no, it's really like, I need, I need some attention here. Exactly, and I just want to share a quick story. Just the other day, I had a conversation with a wonderful gentleman. He spent 11 years in the Navy, and he was telling me that for a two-year period, and Glenn, you can relate to this, he didn't see his family but 60 days out of two years. And Joanne, when you yeah. take children... Uh, particularly young children, the formative years, we're talking, you know, say 4 to 
12, I don't know, somewhere in that neighborhood, and you take two years out of their life where one of their primary parents is not around, that's got to be, they got to have some effect, right? It is, and you know, the, the child is always waiting for them to come home. They can hardly wait for them to come home. And sometimes when they get there, they don't know who this person is. Uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, they're not the person that left. They're not the one that they remember. It takes them a while to reconnect. It's not just instant. They love them. I'm just saying the connection is, you know, missing because they missed all that time. And they're going, oh, who are you? You know. But everything... Everything yeah. from the, the, let's just talk about men that are deployed, all right? Women deploy yeah. a great deal as well, but just, just taking the absent father into, pers into perspective here for a second. The child, you know, they don't get to ride on dad's shoulders. They don't get to run to the store with him. They, they've missed his smell and his, his touch and the way he holds him and he tucks him in at bed, you know, into bed at night. All those things, you know, the cum total of that is even when you go on a six-month deployment, yeah. it's got to be pretty monumental. Yes, and I talked to some of, like you talked to some of the men, and sometimes when they come back, some may be in extreme pain, something's happened to them. Some of them have PTSD. There's so many things that they experience when they're gone, when they come back, they can't play with their children. You know, they can't even connect sometimes because they're, you know, their mind is really messed up at the time. And so they feel bad because they want to. They want to just roll around on the floor like they used to with them or carry them or do whatever they used to do with them. And sometimes they can't. And a child sometimes doesn't understand that. You know, why? You know, why can't you? They can't, sometimes they can't see their pain. You know, and they see their parent. Oh, you're, you're the fine to me. You know, why can't you? Sure. So there's a lot of distance there for both of them. Of course. Yeah, and, and I wanted to... I'm a military brat. That's Talk the, about that. That's the affectionate term. Yeah, and, yeah, we like that military brat. Yeah, and, and my dad was gone to Vietnam for a year. He was also a World War II veteran, but I wasn't born then, so I don't guess that counts. <laughs> uh, but uh, in, in my particular case, I want to tell you what really helped is at an early age, I got involved in sports, and I played all kinds of sports. And uh, But I was a loner. Uh, I pretty much was a loner. Uh, up until I got in probably the second year of high school, I, you know, and you were talking about that earlier, Joanne, uh, you know, they, they feel alone, and, and I, I guess that finally got in, ingrained into me as a way to live, and, and I, used to, I used to go to the gym and shoot baskets for hours upon hours uh, by myself. I wasn't looking for anybody for a pickup game or anything else, so it, so it has effects. And another thing uh, people need to realize who are, who are not military, military families out there is, you know, another thing that the child has to, to adjust to and, and get used to, I guess you'd say, is moving around. I mean, mm. you know, I lived in like six places as I was growing up, and uh, you have to start all over and make new friends uh, the whole nine yards. And, you know, when I got to be a junior and senior in high school, I beg my father not to get reassigned somewhere and by golly he got reassigned to Vietnam so we were able to stay where we were at but yeah it, it, it's it's you know that's another strain on the child speak to that if you I would did, Joanne you know, yeah I was not in the military but we did move around all the time and I know how that feels to always be going to a new school a new neighborhood you feel like you're the oddball out because there you are again at another school you don't know anybody you know it's just so hard and they try to fit in sometimes they do and sometimes they just don't and so then they're feeling separate again from everything and it's so hard to, what we need to do also is you know if even if you're not the parent and you're just know the child and some people can take the time to talk to them they don't realize how much that makes them feel special they realize somebody's talking to me you know someone's taking the time to talk to them and letting them know they're important and asking them, what, you know, what are you doing and what do you like to do and different things as a person, as a human being. Even though they're children, they still have these feelings and then they, like you're saying, you're feeling alone, you don't know what to do and people need to be kind. I can remember going to school one time and standing there at a new school and this girl saying, oh, come on in here, you have lunch with us. To this day, she will never know what that meant to me, mm -hmm. you know, to be included. Oh, yeah. I would have been standing there for days by myself. 
so we, if everyone would take time to notice children and smile at them, talk to them, um, you know, a lot of times also the other parent is so busy trying to be both parents, you know, that they are either working or they're this or that, they need help sometimes. We could offer at times to help them, you know, and, and certain things like they can offer, I know there's classes sometimes that people have, you know, if they would reach out and offer some to some of the military children, you know, would you like to take this painting class? Would you like to take this, whatever. Exactly. It's something that they can express themselves. Oh, excellent point. I just want to share a quick quote from a piece out of the Department of Defense online. I'm not sure where I grabbed this, but it says, Our children are an inspiration and a source of pride. It is fitting that we reflect and recognize the contributions and personal sacrifices our children make to our armed forces. Frequent moves and extended family separation make military life especially challenging. So like you were just saying, Joanne, the more people around these children can get involved in their lives, whether you take them fishing or ask mom or dad first, take them fishing, take them to get an ice cream or the video game or whatever you're doing, get involved and understand that they have some special challenges because as often as we hear in the normal mainstream media that, hey, the civilian sector is, you know, military is no different than the civilian sector, couldn't be Further Less, from the truth. Thank you. There's no parallel. There's no comparison on so many different levels, but particularly, and we have to be sensitive to the kids, because Glenn just said there's two million military, two million military kids. Right. And I know, and you know, if, if people could take time, like, like you were talking about, we, you know, because you're around a base. There's a lot of kids there that are military. Mm -hmm. But if you're living in a town where you don't really realize it, sometimes sometimes you go into a school, some people have certain talents. You know, and they go into a school or something and say, you know, I'd like to help any kids, or is there any kids here that might need help with, I, I can do this, whatever, like you're saying. They go on hikes, they take kids on hikes, they have a musical group that they have. Sure. They have kids that, so many things. And if you could share some of your talents with these kids, it makes them feel special. And it takes time, you know, some of their time where they feel like they're included in things. They need that. Um, I was talking to a vet, <laughs> and it's, I was just asking him, what are the, some of the things that, you know, that you remember? Because he's been out now since 2006. And he says, you know, you don't realize that you put up this wall because you just don't want them to be hurt. You don't want to know about all these things that you experience. Uh -huh. You don't want them to be a part of all that ugliness and evil that they experience. And so they just blow up. But they have to realize that these children are living in their world. You know, you think it's just your world, but they're in your world. And so you have to learn to be able to be with them. And you have to take that time and talk to them. And you have to let them know that they are important and that you're aware of them. And you have to include them in so many things and so many times that they who have come back and say, I'm going to go off by myself, I need to be alone, I can't do it with other people. And that takes more away from the child. They've already been gone all this time, you know. So they have to make it an effort. I know it's hard for a lot of them. But yeah, that's... That attention, you know. And that's... Okay, yeah, that's all right. That's excellent advice for everybody out there. And that's... I, I knew you were going to provide some positive ways to deal with the situations that arise in that special family of military children and uh, I just want to throw in a little one for the local veterans uh, who may attend some of the schools particularly in Satellite Beach have a uh, Honor Veterans Day every year Ugh. and it's an eye-watering experience when it's all fabulous. these kids are clapping and screaming and uh, singing patriotic songs. Yeah, when, it, when it's done, don't let them get away. Go up and thank each one of them that you can. Yeah, it is phenomenal. And I just want to mention, you, you talked about, I think it's vital that this society of ours, whether we're talking military kids or just kids out there in the community, get them away from the television and the video games. you got to get them outside. Sports. <laughs> yes, like Glenn said, sports. Get them active, off their butts and doing something. And, of course, AVET Project is always geared to that. Kids on the Water, the huge event that's coming up, which we're going to cover in detail. 
but I also wanted to mention right here on Patrick Air Force Base, I know, you know, forgive me for everybody that's listening from Montana to Nebraska to Texas. Uh, we love you all. We really appreciate you listening to American Warrior Radio online. But this is just kind of a local uh, anecdote here. We, AVET Project, through cooperation with Home Depot Foundation, have basically renovated three of the playgrounds here on Patrick Air Force Base, and they're beautiful. And they actually have big beautiful white safety fencing around them now so moms and dads can sit outside the perimeter and at the picnic tables and let Johnny and Susie run around like crazy inside and be safe but just getting them outdoors don't you think Joanne is, is that good advice yes. come on yes when I was in Texas they had a family that has a ranch and they would invite certain events once a month to have a big barbecue but their teenage daughter would take the children and they had horses and make sure that they all got to ride the horse. The horses, in fact, sometimes you had to bring more in. And I was just so amazed because those kids love that. You know, maybe they've never even been around a horse and they get to ride this horse. So, it's so there's so many things that we can do that we just don't even think about that they would enjoy. And what you're doing is wonderful. These kids, you know, they love being with the family, but also really like not just standing around like you talked about. Sometimes they go to events and they have to sit there. Or, you know, they have stuff that they have to do. And I, this is kind of off the wall here, but I was asking one of the vets, and he was, you know, about all these things. And he said, one of the things that bothers him, I know it's different than what you think it's going to be. He says, it really bothers me sometimes when everybody tells my children I'm a hero. Mm -hmm. He said, because I just got through yelling at them or correcting them or something, you know. And he said, it to me is kind of hard because I don't want them to bow down to me and think, Dad, the hero, what do you do? Because sometimes they can't even tell them what they did. You know what I mean? Oh. What was involved in this part of being a hero. And so we need to honor our children by just being, you're a, you're the child, and we want to honor you. What can we do? Would you like to go do this? Would you like to do that? You know, your dad or mother is in the military. We're so appreciative of that. We honor them because they're serving our country. You know, Exactly, exactly. And we're talking to Joanne Ivins, AVET Project's Director of Counseling, calling in from her beautiful home in Oregon. So what do you tell kids? You just brought this up. What do you tell kids about your service? Obviously, uh, Dad is not going to say, yeah, I went over there and killed uh, 10 Hajis to protect my troops. But what, what can you feel comfortable about telling them if, if they're hearing from the outside influences that my dad's a hero? You know, give a little insight into that, Joanne. Well, a lot of times, like, with this particular person, uh, when they say your dad's a hero, he's always saying, I was just protecting my brothers or my sisters. You know, in the military, that's how they feel. It's family to them. When I'm over there, I'm looking out for everybody, whatever I can do to protect them or, you know, watch over them, and that's what he was doing. So he doesn't have to go into detail about exactly what happened, but, you know, he might glaze over. It depends on the, the, the age of the child, you know. But sometimes they'll say, you know, we had, we were in a fight, and, you know, we were, the, there was a bomb or something, or we had to protect ourselves, and, you know, this thing happened, and a little child under, would not understand. I had to kill somebody. They would not understand that, you know. But we were just protecting each other and fighting along each other. There's just so many things that they learn to say, that, you know, why are you a hero? How, how come your leg's missing? You know, we were blown up by a sure. bomb that was our... You know, so many things that they encounter, they understand what happened, you know. Well, yeah, um, the, the child's natural curiosity, of course. I mean, that... that so, you know, they have certain ways that they approach them about what happened, because they're not going to tell them the extent of some of that, what happened, children of age to understand it. Exactly, so, and, but you, you know. at the at the beginning of this segment... Of Journey of the Spirit with Joanne Ivins, Zavet Project's Director of Counseling, you mentioned that uh, you need to communicate with the kids. That's like primary, right? Yes, yes. And they, you know, they, they can't because they see things on TV all the time. They see the news where something's being blown up, they see this, they see that, but they don't know about the physical person person contact, you know, that's happened. You know, it's general group, you know, everything went in there and something happened, a bomb blew up, whatever. But they don't really know, unless they're older, that these, whoever, that they might have experienced in going into a house face to face or, you know, with whatever, this, this part of the thing. And so if the child is old enough, he can 
understand that. I'm sorry, you know, the father or mother, because they're all involved when they're over there. Um, this happened. We had to protect ourselves because they were shooting at us or they blew up our car or whatever, whatever. And it's a, we're in a war. You know, we're battling for this or that. Now, you know, you talk to them about it all because they will ask questions and they do want to know, you know, what happened, Dad? How come you lost your leg or your arm or... You know, how come were well, your friends not coming over that used to come over with you all the time? And, or you used to talk about this person and he's gone, you know. And, and it's emotional wow. for the vet to talk about it, you yeah. know, about losing their friends over there. Oh, yeah. And you know your kids are going to poke at you and prod and try and get answers. You yes, know. they do. So, yeah, you really need to talk to them. You need to take the time to talk to them. And that way they don't feel like you're hiding. Not, not that you're hiding, but they just understand, why won't you talk to me? Know, why won't you tell me what's going on? Yeah, and they, like I said, they don't have to go into complete detail, but they can tell them a little bit of what happened so they understand what happened when you lost your leg, you know, what happened when you lost your arm, or so many things like that. Or, like I'm saying, some of them have PTSD. They don't understand that. Yeah, because they don't have that visible wound. It's in. It's inside. It's in their psyche. Yeah. So it even makes it more challenging, more yeah. than likely. Yeah, and I, you know, yeah. some. At least uh, in some cases, it's a little easier to start that communication process nowadays through Skype and mm -hmm. those kind of things than, you know, when I was uh, in Thailand and Vietnam, uh, the whole time I was there, I one time I took a C-130 uh, up to Thai, uh, Bangkok and went to the phone bank, the off-base phone bank, and that was the only time I got to talk to my wife while I was there, and uh, boy, that was that was so exciting that I, <laughs> I couldn't believe it, so I, I'm taking that and I'm translating into what you're saying, and, and it's still, even with Skype and those kind of things, it's when you're there person to person talking to the children, uh, participating with the children, I think that participation, it just, in my case, I know that went a hundred miles, so that was great. Oh, yes. And, I, and we have to realize that sometimes when they come home, they're just exhausted and under such stress. You know, there's so many things involved. And sometimes it can be helpful if people in the family would, you know, take the time to take the child and give them a few minutes, to, you know, alone at time, you know, two minutes. relax and still family together. But it, not work. Because you know how sometimes you see kids, mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy, you know, they want their attention. Right. You know, every minute. Sure, and sure. They just can't do it right away. You know, they're going, they can hug them, but they can't quite get into it yet. It's, you know, they're still, I had to say standoffish, but that's kind of how it is because they've had to hold their emotions in for so long. You know, because when you're away, you have to, you know, gear up and be, you know, tough and all this kind of stuff. So that when you're, it takes a while to be able to relax and come home and do that. Like, remember, Garen, we had one vet that we had at our retreat, and he said, he's been home for two years. And he said, I didn't realize until today that this is the first time I've relaxed. Isn't that the truth? You know? That's Joanne's talking about AVET Project's PRNR, Project Recuperation yeah. Reintegration Retreats. Joanne, I always wanted to finish with an exercise, but we don't have time. We're out of time on this episode. Oh, okay. But again, that's a child. That's your exercise. <laughs> exactly. That's it. Wonderful. Love a child. <laughs> Joanne Ivins, AVET Project's Director of Counseling, with her segment, Journey of the Spirit. Thank you, Joanne. Have a blessed day. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And folks, you can contact Joanne. Just go to avetproject.org, click on the contact info, and you'll see her there. You can speak to her, and she'll get back to you, because it's always important to reach out to our children as well as everybody else we love. i got to tell you, we got big things coming up on May 17th. It's Kids on the Water. We're talking about children. Yep. You don't want to miss that, but we can't leave before this, Glenn. Yeah, if you're a veteran or a, a friend or a family member of a veteran and you see that they're in some kind of crisis... Uh, call the Veterans Crisis Line, 1-800-273-8255, press 1. And as always, don't forget, thank a vet. I'd have never got it in twice. <laughs> no, you did great.